I'm Emily Williams. I'm an avian ecologist at Denali National Park and Preserve, and I'm helping out with our new study on gray jays. Gray jays are a resident bird, and so they spend their entire year and life in Alaska. And in other parts of their range where gray jays have been studied, they've been showing some pretty precipitous declines. The thought is that maybe climate change is having a role. Gray jays stood out to us as a bird to start research on because they have a really interesting ecology. They rely on cached food all winter long and they rely on long-term cached food that is perishable. Gray jays are a caching species. So they collect food um, during the late summer and fall that they prepare and cache in the barks of trees. Those caches are supposed to last the entire winter. They're relying on those caches to amp up for breeding and also to feed their young. And so the thought is that with warming temperatures, there's more freeze and thaw events going on and that's affecting the caches themselves, the cache quality and um, not having enough food available for the breeding season. And so kind of the overarching goal of the project is to see how Alaska's population of gray jays are faring in a changing climate. The gray jay field season officially starts in late February. And in late February, we're visiting all the areas where we had banded um, gray jays the previous fall. And we're going to those territories and doing a lot of observations and trying to figure out who's who. We're doing nest searching style work. So we're um, going to the territories and we're actually presenting the individuals with nesting material. So we've been taking out grouse feathers and pieces of cotton ball and we'll stick them on a branch. And we try to do it very obvious and we try to do it when the bird is present so they're actually watching us do it. Hopefully the bird will take the nesting material and then if it takes the nesting material then we're immediately with our binoculars getting eyes on where it's going. When we follow the flight and we actually see that they're taking it to a nest, we have hopefully found the nest and then we'll take a GPS location and then once we have nests we monitor them every several days to check for hatch and then we wait until the nestlings are big enough and then we actually climb up to the nests with ladders and these nests are on average about 20 feet high and we'll access the nest, take the nestlings out and band the nestlings. Then we'll put the nestlings back into the nest cup, climb back down, and monitor the nest until it, it fledges or fails. It's really apparent when you're setting out that nesting material that they are like watching you and calculating what you're doing and, and learning from your behavior. Because all these birds are individually marked, we can also look at their survival and what are the mortality factors. You know, is it starvation? Is it collision with vehicles? We've already had a few individuals killed by vehicles on the park road. Having individually marked birds and knowing their survivorship over their lifespan is, is going to be a really interesting aspect of the project for us too. We started a pilot season in 20. 16 when we went out in the fall and tagged a number of birds in our study area so I think we captured almost 60 individual birds and individually marked them and then we began some nest searching in the late winter and we managed to uh, find over 20 nests so it's kind of the early stages of the project we have a lot of plans to expand our research with collaborators from Canada that are working on the Algonquin study 
and also some collaborators at the University of Washington to look at foraging ecology, caching behavior, and some more details about population dynamics, diet, breeding, and productivity. I think when people learn more about the ecology of jays that live next door to them, they get even more protective and more invested in their conservation. And so I think it's important to study gray jays because, you know, first of all, we want to keep common species common, but also if a common bird's declining, what does that mean for other birds that aren't so common?